Charlie Chaplin, Greta Garbo, Rudolph Valentino, Buster Keaton, all well-known stars of the silent movie era. By the 1990s, one man was doing all he could to keep the silent movie era alive until someone decided to silence the man himself forever. Our moment in crime is the silent movie theatre murder. By the 1940s, Hollywood was no longer producing silent films. This once popular form of entertainment was now a thing of the past. But one couple from Oklahoma, John and Dorothy Hampton, made it their mission to make sure that silent movies were made an accessible part of Los Angeles history. The couple spent time visiting film studios around the city with the sole purpose of collecting as many silent films as they could. Then, in 1942, the Hamptons opened the 184-seat silent movie theatre. They had the building built on an empty plot of land and made the second floor of the building their home. John even turned the bathroom into a film lab where he could restore the films. Then the films would be shown on the big screen and the Hamptons even began welcoming silent movie stars like Clara Bow to showings of their films. Sadly, the chemicals John used in the process of restoring films began to take a toll on his health. He was diagnosed with cancer and the Hamptons decided to close the theatre in the 1970s. It wasn't until years later that the theatre was reopened. John passed away in 1990, and Dorothy decided to give the theatre to a family friend, Lawrence Austin, for free. Lawrence spent time renovating the theatre, which reopened the following year. Lawrence moved into the theatre's apartment, and Dorothy continued working in the theatre's lobby until Alzheimer's started to take its toll. Lawrence continued to do whatever it took to make sure the silent movie theatre lived on. While renovating the theatre, Lawrence met the man who would become his partner, and later, the man behind Lawrence's murder. Born James Leslie Scott, James Van Sickle had arrived at the silent movie theatre in 1990 to redecorate the place. Lawrence was 67 at the time and, despite the 40 year age difference, the pair hit it off. Van Sickle became the theatre's projectionist. When he wasn't staying with Lawrence, he lived in Paramount. But Van Sickle wasn't without a dark past. He had several aliases and at least two California driver's licenses, as well as having had many runnings with the law. In 1988, Van Sickle was charged with attempted murder in Compton, but the case was dropped when the victim failed to appear for the trial. The following year, he served time for transporting and selling narcotics. After this, he was accused of trying to pass a forged cheque. In the file for this case is a letter from Lawrence, attesting to his partner's good character. Lawrence himself was not without fault. In 1983, he was convicted of one count of grand theft for his part in an embezzlement case. For this, he served 22 months in state prison. Having remained on the good side of the law since then, perhaps he thought he had a good chance of encouraging Van Sickle to leave his life of crime behind. But in April 1996, Lawrence filed a police report accusing his partner of assault and robbery. In the end, Lawrence chose not to press charges. 
Less than a year later, Lawrence would be dead. As the sole beneficiary to Lawrence's estate, Van Sickle was sure that he had nothing to lose and everything to gain if his partner died sooner than expected. The only thing in the way of the ownership of the silent movie theatre, a 2000 film library and $80,000 was Lawrence himself. Van Sickle, however, did not want to be the one to do the dirty work. But he did know someone who would be willing to carry out a murder for hire. Van Sickle had met Christian Rodriguez three years previously, when they were both employed at a business in Los Angeles. Rodriguez was 19 years old and a resident of Southgate. The $25,000 Van Sickle offered him in exchange for killing Lawrence was too tempting, as was the further $5,000 offered if he killed another theatre employee, Mary Giles, who was due to work on the day the crime would take place. Apart from the murders, all Van Sickle asked of Rodriguez was to make the crime look like a robbery gone wrong. The date was the 17th of January, 1997. As usual, Lawrence introduced the films showing that day. On this day, a series of short films were being shown. Around 60 to 70 people watched the 1927 film Sunrise before Van Sickle, who was working in the projection booth, loaded up the next film school days. As the second film began to play, one of the patrons stood up and made his way into the theatre lobby. This patron was, of course, Christian Rodriguez. He was about to act out the murder for hire plan. Rodriguez made his way over to the candy counter, which Mary Giles, aged 19, was in charge of that shift. He enquired about buying advance tickets and Mary directed him to the ticket counter where Lawrence was stationed. It was then that Rodriguez pulled out a 357 Magnum and demanded money. As Lawrence started to comply with Rodriguez, he was shot once in the face. Rodriguez then turned to Mary and shot her twice in the chest, before turning back to Lawrence and shooting him twice in the chest. Upon hearing the gunshots, other theatre-goers rushed into the lobby. Rodriguez then fired several shots randomly, before running down the theatre aisle and out of the back exit. Mary Giles survived. Lawrence, who was 74, did not. Van Sickle did his best to play the role of a grieving partner. He told Lawrence's friends how he was the one who raised the alarm. He sobbed when he told Lawrence's friends how he'd found a handwritten will that named him as the sole beneficiary of Lawrence's estate. At a fundraiser held for the theatre, he gave a speech honouring Lawrence's memory. But the net began to close in on Van Sickle when he tried to withdraw $80,000 from Lawrence's bank account. While investigating the murder, the authorities decided to look into the circumstances that led to Lawrence becoming the owner of the theatre. The Los Angeles Public Guardian's office was concerned that Lawrence had cheated Dorothy Hampton out of the theatre, something made possible because of Dorothy's Alzheimer's. When Dorothy signed over ownership of the theatre to Lawrence, she never received any payment. Then there was the fact that Lawrence never paid any gift taxes when he took over the theatre. He also had an unpaid tax bill worth $2.3 million. As a result of this, 
The LA Police Department and the IRS froze Lawrence's estate and placed it in a conservatorship. His bank account was no longer accessible, the theatre was closed and the silent movie collection was moved to the UCLA Film School for safekeeping. The police arrested Van Sickle in Paramount after he tried to withdraw money from Lawrence's frozen bank account. It also helped that the LAPD had been informed by the US Secret Service that a civilian had named Van Sickle as a suspect in Lawrence's murder. Van Sickle was held without bail on five felony charges, including one count of murder with special circumstances. Rodriguez's downfall came when the TV show America's Most Wanted commissioned a composite sketch. Not only was it featured on the show, but it was also published in newspapers. Rodriguez saw the sketch and began making incriminating comments about the sketch and himself that were overheard by a witness. A tipster informed the police of Rodriguez's whereabouts when he saw the sketch in a newspaper. Rodriguez was arrested and held without bail on the same charges as Van Sickle. The survivor of the shooting, Mary Giles, testified at Rodriguez's trial. He was found guilty of murder and received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. 37 years were added to the sentence for the attempted murder of Mary Giles, two counts of attempted robbery, lying in wait and murder for profit. Rodriguez's defence team had requested a retrial which was not granted. Judge G. D. Smith, while sentencing Rodriguez, said that Rodriguez's impoverished background did not lead him to murder and that he was lucky to have avoided the death penalty. Rodriguez's parents wept as their son was sentenced. Speaking about the parents, Rodriguez's attorney, Ezekiel Perlo, said, They're ashamed for what he did. They're victims of his, just as much as Austin's family is. Van Sickle was also found guilty. In February 1999, a hung jury spared his life and the district attorney chose not to retry the death penalty phase of the case. Instead, he received a life sentence with no chance of parole, plus 11 years and 4 months for attempted murder, attempted robbery and commercial burglary. Both men remain in prison to this day. As for the silent movie theatre itself, the property was put up for sale and was eventually bought by Charlie Lustman. He invested $1 million into the theatre and it reopened on the 5th of November 1999. Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times was the first film played there after Lawrence's murder. When Charlie fell ill in 2006, he sold the theatre to brothers Dan and Sammy Harkham. The brothers went on to form the organisation Sin Family, with its aim being to show interesting and unusual films at the silent movie theatre. But it seems that Lawrence Austin is not far from the theatre, even in death. Some believe that Lawrence's ghost haunts the silent movie theatre to this very day. <laughs>